Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a trigonometric product. We have cosine of pi over 5 times cosine of 2 pi over 5. These are in radians. I'm going to go ahead and convert them to degrees, which is a little easier to work with. So pi represents 180 degrees. Therefore, in degrees, this is going to be 36 degrees and this is going to be 72 degrees. I don't like writing the degree symbol, so from now on, I'm not going to be writing the degree symbol, but all the angles will be in degrees. So we're going to evaluate cosine 36 times cosine 72. And I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So for my first method, I'm going to introduce a special triangle, which I'll give you a little bit more, more information towards the end. Uh, I will share with you what it looks like and, you know, you can look it up if you want. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a triangle, an isosceles triangle. And the angles of this isosceles triangle is going to be 72 degrees, 72 degrees and 36 degrees. Those are the values that I need pretty much. So that makes sense, right? So the base angles are basically... Uh, 72 degrees so not only that I'm also gonna split this triangle up so this is one of the angles is gonna be 72 degrees right here and then I'm gonna go ahead and split up so I'm gonna draw a segment uh, as long as this one so these two are gonna be congruent and since uh, this is 72 degrees this is also gonna be 72 degrees now something that something interesting happens here when we do this we do get uh, since our whole triangle is uh, isosceles, we also get an other isosceles triangle because this angle becomes 36. And since the base angles are 72 each, this also becomes 30, 36 degrees and this also becomes 36 degrees. Make sense? So now we have another isosceles triangle. In other words, if you put these two isosceles triangles, you get a very, very special triangle, which we'll talk about uh, the name of later. So let's go ahead and um, call these congruent segments X. So if this is X, this is going to be X and this is going to be X. And let's say this equals one. So this length is gonna be X plus one because this is isosceles, remember, and the base angles are 72 degrees and 72 degrees. So far so good? I hope so. Now, notice that if we name the vertices obviously, right? This will make more sense. We notice that ABC and BCD are similar. Why? Because they're both 72, 72, 36 triangles. Make sense? So we can write some ratios. Start with the larger triangle and start with the larger side. The larger side on the larger triangle divided by the larger side on the smaller triangle. That ratio is equal to the smaller side on the larger triangle which is ABD, by the way, that's the, I'm sorry, the ABC is the larger one. Uh, and the shorter side is going to be X. And the shorter side on the DBC is going to be 1. So this ratio applies to these tr two triangles because they are similar. Make sense? Okay. And what am I talking about when I say similarity? I'm basically talking about ABC triangle is similar to, and I'm not saying they're congruent. Uh, they are, I think that's the symbol, right, for similarity. I can't remember exactly, but anyways, let, it, let this be the symbol for similarity. It's going to be the B, C, D triangle. Okay, those two triangles are similar. And now from here, we get a quadratic equation, which is very easy to solve, obviously. X squared equals X plus 1. Put everything on the same side. Use the quadratic formula. You get two solutions, negative B plus minus the square root of 5 divided by 2, because that's what you get from b squared minus 4ac. Now, this gives us two solutions, obviously, but we can't get two solutions. There should only be one answer for the length, right? And obviously, this is less than 0, so that's not going to count. This is the only possible solution for x. So we got the value of x, so what, right? Let's go ahead and use what is called law of sines in this triangle. In which triangle we're going to use it? Let's use it in the smaller one. So here's the triangle I'm talking about. By the way, if you look at the lengths, this is going to be x, this is going to be x, and this is going to be 1. And the angles are going to be 72 degrees, 72 degrees, and 36 degrees. All right? 
Let's go ahead and use the law of sines here. How does it apply, right? Well, we start with one of the side lengths, x divided by sine 72 equals 1 divided by sine 36. A over sine A equals B over sine B equals C over sine C. That's the law of sines. Now, from here we get, by cross multiplication, we get sine 72 equals x times sine 36. From double angle formula, sine 72 can be written as 2 sine 36 cosine 36. And then from here, since sine 36 is not 0, we can go ahead and cancel that out. And this gives us the value of x, which is interesting, right? 2 cosine 36. Awesome. But we do know the value of x, right? x is equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. So set that equal to 1 plus root 5 over 2. And guess what? This gives you the value of cosine 36 as 1 plus root 5 over 4. Or let's write it as root 5 plus 1 over 4, which is a little better because I want to write the root 5 first. You're going to see in a little bit why that's the case. Okay? So this is the value of cosine 36 degrees. And let's go ahead and use the double angle formula, cosine 2 alpha equals 2 cosine squared alpha minus 1. Replace alpha with 36, and you're going to get cosine 72 equals 2 cosine squared 36 minus 1, which is 2 times root 5 plus 1 over 4, squared minus 1. And if you simplify this, do all the math, you know, so on and so forth, you're going to get the following, root 5 minus 1 over 4. And yes, cosine 36 and cosine 72 are conjugates. That's why we're going to multiply them to find the answer. What were we looking for? Cosine 36 times cosine 72. And that's equal to root 5 plus 1 over 4 multiplied by root 5 minus 1 over 4. That will be 5 minus 1, which is 4 over 16. Therefore, the answer in the simplest form would be 1 fourth. And this brings us to the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and talk about the second method now. And obviously, second method is much, much nicer, but you'll get to decide, right? So, we're trying to evaluate cosine 36 times cosine 72, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply this by 2 sine 36 and divide by 2 sine 36. Obviously, I didn't do anything because it's multiplying by 1. But this, this, and this together will give me 2 sine alpha cosine alpha, which is the formula for sine 2 alpha, which is sine 72. So that's awesome, right? And guess what this is going to end up being? Now, we do have the sine alpha cosine alpha again, but without a 2. So let's go ahead and multiply by 2 the top and the bottom. The top is going to be from sine 2 alpha, sine 144. And the bottom is going to be 4 times sine 36. And guess what? Sine 44 is sine 36 because they add up to 180, therefore they are equivalent. And this gives us one-fourth again as before. So the idea is sine alpha is the same thing as sine 180 minus alpha. Think about it in the first and second quadrants, their sine is the same. I mean this one, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.